visit me visit us with your presence and power lord put something in me today that will take me through the month pray and talk to the lord to lift you higher through his word today in jesus name i prayed father i thank you because today you are going to glorify yourself in our midst do it now as we continue in jesus name we pray pursuit of christ highest mark pursuit of christ highest mark our lord jesus christ is our model he is our example and our lord jesus christ the bible say is lifted far above principalities and powers and the bible say we are members of his body so it implies that we are supposed to also be seated with him. So the Bible says we are seated with him in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. But in reality, not every believer can say they are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Most of us, if there is a way to categorize it, most of us are still under the earth's surface. We have not even come out. Those days, they used to say the sky is the limit. But they have come to discover that no, after the sky, there is a space, a galaxy that has no end. In the same vein, in the Christian faith, as you come, the height that Christ is is unfathomable. The depth of Christ is unpossible, is unsearchable. Believers are supposed to aim, to press forward, to attain that height. In Philippians chapter 3, read verse 10. Paul the apostle, that was his waking toy, said that I may know him. It takes first of all knowing him. If you don't know him, if you have not known him, you can't talk about pursuing his highest mark. You have to first of all know him. How do you know him? Through repentance. He said that I may know him. And through what do you know him? You know him through his word. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable to his dead. If by any means I may attain the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained or already perfect, but I press on that I may attain that for which that I may lay hold on that for which Jesus has so laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth to those things which are ahead, to those things which are ahead, not the things which are behind. I press toward the man, toward the goal for the prize of the high, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as mature. Have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal Himself to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. What Paul is saying is this 
that in the Christian race you don't reveal you don't get uh, carried away by what you did yesterday but because the grace of yesterday is not sufficient for the duty the challenge of today that you are supposed to always look you see paul was saying he pressed towards christ and the bible said looking unto jesus some brethren some christians they are mark is a man is a woman born of flesh and blood men have their limitations but Christ is our perfect example. We are to press towards the man of Christ. And he said, if you look at verse 9 of that same Philippians chapter 3, Paul said, he laid down everything for the excellent let me read from verse 8 yet indeed i also count all things lord for the excellency christ is excellent christ is not just good and very good he is excellent in short not just excellent he is outstanding he is unique and we need to press. You keep I, I, I keep using one illustration that the people of the world they are always setting goals to get to the next level. They do what they call quarterly appraisal to know where. They are. Or they do yearly appraisal. For this time, if you listen to all these business uh, reports, they say Q1, Q2, that is quarter one, quarter two. Then it say in the period under review, last year this was where we were. Today this is where we are. But Christian, wake up in the morning, go out, uh, come back. There's no evaluation. There's no appraisal. There's no goal setting. It's all if you set no goal, there's nothing that drives you. It is goal that drives. And the goal for the Christian is to attain the height that Christ has attained. I remember when I was doing my undergraduate program, there was a particular year God lay, uh, visited our school fellowship. And in the various department, our brethren were leading their classes. So one brother had parallel A's. I want to say parallel A, that is all his courses he had A's. He was in the sciences. Another brother too was in the sciences. He made uh, every other course A, he had one B. When he was given to himself, when he saw the B, he started crying. Out of all the courses, because he had one B, he started crying. That's because he has set a mark to make parallel is in the christian journey set your goal set your mark and the mark that christ as a where christ is if you get there you have nothing to worry about. You say, is it possible? He said, the works that I do, shall you what? Do. He said, even greater works than this, because I go to what? To the Father. 
Brethren, we need to aspire. This month, by the end of this month, the first half is gone. Where is your Christian life now? If you plot the graph of your Christian life from January till now, where is it? Is it going up or is it descending? If it's descending, you still have opportunity to make amends. We are supposed to be increasing in knowledge of Christ. Look at it in a um, in Second Peter chapter three, you are supposed to be increasing in the grace of God, and you are supposed to be increasing in the knowledge of Christ. In Second uh, Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. Second Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. But grow in grace. Are you growing in grace? What is grace? Grace is divine ability, divine enablement. In other words, if you are growing in grace, if, for instance, in January, you are praying 20 minutes, by now, your prayer life should have got beyond that. It means there is something helping you. You are growing in grace. If there were temptations that used to make you to fall, by now, those temptations are supposed to be under your feet. It's a sign you are growing in grace. If you used to have doubt in January, Little things you are doubting. And now, there's no more doubt. Those things don't bring doubt to your heart. It's a sign you are growing in grace. But if those things are still bringing doubt, worry, and anxiety, it's a sign you are not growing in grace. Because when there's a realm you get to, nothing worries you. You just know that God is on the throne. God is still on the throne. He never forsaketh his own. God is on the throne. There's nothing that is impossible with him. If you are a growing believer, challenges is all. Paul said, I take, I take pleasure. I take pleasure. I take joy in reproaches. It's like a general that has fought in the battlefield and has conquered. He saw when he hear the sound of God, something telling him, pick your gun and go out. Who is that challenging me here? If you are a growing believer, battles don't alarm you. Storms do not alarm me. They sometimes must cease. Trials do not harm me. For oh, I have blessed peace. Storms do not alarm the growing believer. Oh, that the economy is very bad. Does not worry the growing believer because he knows that the word of God says, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I am beyond. Now I am whole. I have never for I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed. 
begging bread. If you are growing, nothing worries you. So Bible say, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are growing in the knowledge of Christ, you will know that you are complete in him. And if you are complete in Christ, who is that witch? Who is that wizard? That occult power that can arm you. Bible says in Romans 8.31, If God be for us, what? Who can be against us? He said, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Savior Jesus Christ. Why are we not growing in the knowledge of God? We don't expose ourselves to the world. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. You only grow in the knowledge of Christ through the world. Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 39, He says, Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have life, and they are they which testify of me. Study the word. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mind, but thou shalt meditate therein all day and night. So it said, grow in grace. We are supposed to grow in the knowledge of God. In the knowledge of Christ. The, the, the issue now is, what is this? What are the things that constitutes Christ's highest mark? You see, Bible says that Jesus is full of grace. John chapter 1 verse 14. In Christ's highest mark, you have fullness of grace. John 1 14. John 1 14. And the world became flesh and dwelt among us, and we bear his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace. In Christ's highest mark, you have fullness of grace. So when we say pursue Christ's highest mark, we are saying strive. Aspire to be full of grace. In Christ's highest mark, we have the divine nature. Look at Second Peter chapter one. The divine nature. The divine nature. If you pursue Christ, he will impact unto you his nature. Let's look at Second uh, Peter chapter 1 verse 3. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who call us by glory and virtue by which by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature. What is this divine nature? God is holy. As he who has called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of conversation. So when we say pursuit of Christ as nature, nature of my man, rather, we are talking about fullness of grace. We are talking about righteousness, holiness, purity of life. Christ is full of glory. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. He is full of glory. A believer, as a Christian, if you come around people 
they are supposed to feel something. They're supposed to be, I don't know how to put it, but there's supposed to be a kind of aura, aura of God, aura of God's presence radiating around you. Ephesians 1 17. Ephesians 1 17. Christ is full of glory. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. When you say somebody is Father of something, it means the person has the thing in excess. Look at how John described him in Revelation chapter 1. I read from verse 12. Christ is full of glory. You see, people are supposed to see the glory of God radiating around you, radiating from you, within and without. Revelation chapter 1 verse 12. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lamps. And in the midst of the seven lamps, seven lamps are one like the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and got about with the church with a golden, uh, a golden uh, a girdle. Verse 14. His head and air were white like wool, as white as snow, his eyes like a flame of fire, his feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace. Christ carries glory. I pray that one day the Lord will reveal his glory to us in the church. If the glory of God is revealed in the church, the old people will know that God is in this place. You know, when the Lord descended in his glory at Mount Sinai, the Bible says there was a shaking. When Paul was going to harm the people of God and he saw the Lord in his glory, he could not behold that glory. I told you how I saw an angel and saw glory. That is just an angel. But Christ, Christ emits glory. He emits glory. He emits glory. So that if you come around him, if there was darkness in your heart, all of a sudden you see that joy just spring up because you come under the radius radar of his glory Christ is full of power he said all power in heaven and on earth what has been given unto him that is in, in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 then in John chapter John chapter 3 verse 34 John said that he carries the spirit of God without measure Christ is full of authority. While he was on earth, he commanded this wind to cease. He rebuked the wind. And the Bible said there was a great calm. But how can we attain this eyes mark of Christ? If a student wants to be successful, that student must put in extra efforts. When I was in the secondary school, in my Form 1, in our days we call it Form. Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, Form 4, Form 5 what you call class one. In my form one, class one, first term, second term, 
We did it with all those days in that school, it was a village school. First term at times, most people have not resumed. It's second term that most uh, my serious academic activities goes on. So most time in first term we don't write exams. So in the in the first term, the second term, I took second. Then the third term I took fourth. Then in form two, first second term I took second. The third term, I did I couldn't write because that was when they now introduced school fees, and I had money to pay school fee. How was was the school fee? Thirty naira. Praise the Lord. No, I'm not saying thirty thousand. Thirty naira. I didn't have the money. In short, even the second term. They, they had even driven me out. That one was five naira or so. So there was a youth copper. He said, no, this is one of my best students. I will pay for him. So that was how I wrote the second term. So the third term, I didn't write. So it was my previous result they used to promote me to the next class. But as I was going to form terror, I say, how long will I be undulating this backward and forward movement? Second, fourth, second, fourth. No, I will put an end to this. So I decided to put in greater effort. I set a goal, a mark. I say, I want to read this. So what did I do? I was not depending on what the teacher was telling me. My brother wrote GC. So I took the syllabus, the YX syllabus, and I took that as my study guide. That was what I was reading. The things they are teaching in the class, when the teacher is teaching, I'm ahead of him, especially all those uh, the, the, the subjects that you can read on your own. So maybe it's when the exam is coming, I will, uh, I will now read the note. So when we now wrote the next exam, because I have put in a seven. I used to play a battle. I have friends. We will walk around the village. At 12 midnight, we are still moving about. We will play radio, FM, and we are dancing up and down. Then... But I have my timetable every day in the room. I paste it somewhere. If I had not read before we start moving about, if it is 1 a.m. we come inside the day, I come inside the house. I will read. It's all that time the whole place is even quiet. I will read and make sure the courses I say I will read. That day I read them. My friends, them, they will go and sleep till the following morning. Well, we now go and write. At times, we will go to the class and they will bring impromptu tests. Then they will see this course. Say, ah, how did you do it? I say, now nah, God, praise the Lord. Then, when the exam, we now wrote the exam. From that moment, nobody come near the first position with me. And so, when I'm taking first, the second person, I'll be beating the person with over 200 marks. Because I was putting in extra effort. Midnight, I will be reading. That, that time they said, let everybody do farm, back to the land, back to farm. We'll go and do farm. When I come back, I week after eating, I will sleep. When I, I will wake up. No, I wasn't preparing for exam. I was not reading for exam. I was preparing for work. From Form 3, I was preparing for work. The people of this world in their generation are wiser than the children of light. We want to be like Christ. There's no praying. There's no fasting. There's no studying of the word. There's no taking challenge. There's no evaluation. On our all night in our vigil, there was a prophecy came. Say, there's a prophetess here. The gift is going down. 
the gift is going down. What could make it go down? While men are sleeping, the enemy come and do what? So tasks. Most of us, we want to say, ah, so we want to exercise spiritual gifts. And we don't put in extra efforts. Throughout the night, you are sleeping. Powers of darkness have come and suppress and beclouded you. And you get up. Everything you see is dubbed to worry and anxiety. When they were operating, you were asleep. By the grace of God, they, never, they don't meet me sleeping again. In thought, they always meet me in prayers. Because I am raised as a warrior. You say you are a warrior. And midnight, you are sleeping. You, you wake up maybe 6 a.m. Which warrior are you? You are a dead and sleeping warrior. I mean, the, Isaiah said, they are watchmen are like sleeping dogs that cannot bark. I'm well, telling my, my wife, I'm used to it now. It does not matter the hour I sleep. When I wake up, I am okay now because the body is used to it now. You cannot attain that height if you don't sacrifice. This kind, Jesus Christ says, does not go out but by what? Fasting and prayer. If the church is not praying by now, the enemy would have destroyed the church. If we are not praying, my wife was telling me something. Somebody was telling us something. The person said, somebody came around and uh, was going around. Later, the person said, what, which church do you go? The person told her, I attend the old time power church. He said, I have not heard of that. He said, later, the person said, what concern this visit and the church? He said, the person said, it now dawned on her that the person came to operate. But it's like, she saw power. They are going to see power. She saw power. And said, where, where is the source of this power? Brethren, most of us have been long in the feet. And we are acting like babes in Christ. One, there is no spiritual understanding. We are carnal. Paul said, look at First Corinthians chapter 30, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal as to babes in Christ. Most of them, most of us, you have been in the, in the faith for 20 years, you are acting like a babe. You don't have spiritual insights. You'll be here. You'll be in a place. And the essence of darkness operating, you, you, you could not, you, you cannot get the insight or perceive that the enemy is around. When you attain that height, the powers of darkness, somebody claim to have power, but when power meets power, the lesser power bows. There are some things I don't want to say now. But if you want to attain that act, you must press. That pressing, it means there is opposition. The devil, between that mark and you, there are powers. 
layers of powers. And these powers, they are ancient powers. Ancient powers. Some are from your foundation. Some are in the environment, community where you live. And you want to ascend to that level. They say, we are the people here. Where are you coming from? See down there. They throw one arrow. <laughs> and then you say, oh, if it is like that, I better let me stay where I am. There you are. You cannot attain there. You must be ready to chest out. You must be ready to take on the enemy. That on the way of your progress, of your spiritual progress. And that requires you praying fervently. We say, Elijah, send another Elijah, make me another Elijah. All those are empty words. Elijah did not become Elijah just because God has a call on him. Every one of us has a call, or one form of call or the other upon our life. But the Bible says Elijah was just a man like you and I. The thing that differentiates him from us is his prayer life. What is your prayer life like? How long did you pray? How long did you stay on your knees till the night shone through? Have you prayed through? Do you know what it means to pray through? Have you prayed to the point that the enemies around will look at you with corner eye and we stop greeting you, we stop answering your greeting. You know that you have wounded them. A believer will wake up today, one edict, tomorrow this one. It means you are not there because Christ is seated in heavenly places far above principal land. When you are in that realm, there's peace. No matter the mountain, no matter the challenge, you say, I don't need to go to the Lord in prayers. You settle everything in prayer. And when this, you pray, you have a sorrow in your heart, it is done. And you go away. Because you know that faithful is he who has promised, who also will what? Will do it. When you are in that realm, you can be like, here like this. And then you know what is befalling anyone around. And you know the source and the origin of the thing. And you are able to tell the devil, pack your load and go. When you have that mark, you are victorious because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you are in that mark, you see, Peter, they made a declaration, a call, and said, men and brethren, if you have something to offer, come and give. My numbers had come, he sold the land, he brought everything. So Ananias too was following behind Barnabas. And because Peter has ego highs, Peter said, Call that one. Come. Ananias. Are you in that car? Yes, I'm also. You know the story. We are not talking about all this one that say they are calling people's number. It's a lie. Fake. I watched one clip. I don't know whether it was a drama or whether it was real. <laughs> God, is, God, has, is, God has started doing something. 
one lady, one of these yo-yo prophets. He said, oh, I want to uh, reveal mysteries now. And they said, go on, pastor, prophet, man of God. The lady said, uh, I see you in the spirit realm. On so 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 and so 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 day, this thing happened to you. The lady kept quiet. He said, No, man of God, no. He said, You don't know what you are talking about. He said, I'm telling you that on so and so day, your father died. He said, no, my father is still alive. He said, I don't know what you are talking about. I said, so and so day, your father died. It's like the thing happened in Ghana. He said, no, my father is ill and healthy. My father is in Kumasi. He will say this one. I say, no, pastor. He said, have I met you before? That is what he will say. He say, have, I met, have we met before? You know, the fool will say, no. He asked me, lady, have we met before? She said, yes, we have met before. He says she does not know what he's talking about. I, I mean, have we met physically before? He said, yes, we met at the warehouse the other day. He said, she needs deliverance. She has psychiatric problem. See the deception. We're not talking about that. Peter, he said, that man... That man that is falling there, that one that says his disciple is in the gall of bitterness, he picked him out. And that realm is a realm of power and authority. It's a realm of victory. It's a realm that what you say does not fall to the ground. He say, I'm not a minister. You are not a minister, but you have challenges. And you pray, and those mountains are still there. At that mountain, if you say to this mountain, be that removed, and be that cast into the sea, what? It should obey you. You have people attacking you, fighting you right there. When they came to a man that was in that realm, Elisha, and they came to arrest him. And the servant who was in a low level was afraid. At that realm, there's no fear. Elisha said, Why are you afraid? He said, God, open his eyes that he may see. At that realm, you have speedy answers to prayer. Then, as Elisha said, Open his eyes, God, open his eyes. He said, At that realm, you are talking to God face to face. Some of us, God has not spoken to our ears. God speaks as if another man is all person is talking to you. And the man's eyes was open. He saw horses and chariots of fire about Eliza. Then he said, Oh Lord, I pray thee, smite these people with blindness. And they were smitten with blindness. And he took them to the, to, to the king. Oh, the king said, oh, my father, my father, should I smite them? He said, no, they are prisoners of war. Just give them food and let them go back. Because the Bible says when you give your enemy food, it's like a coal of fire to him. A man in that realm cannot be arrested. That was why when they came to the Elijah, he said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down, consume you and your 50. And they were consumed. Peter was in that realm and they told him Dorcas had died. And he went and said, rise up. And she got up. And the Bible says that as he moved on the street, his shadow were healing the sick. We need to get to a certain level where 
serving God becomes sweet. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter I grow. The more that I love Him, more joy bestows. His day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. Let's rise up. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. The more that I love Him, more joy He bestows. Oh, is this is like heaven, my heart?